Thank you. Imagine that one day you wake up, check your email like many of us do, and then find out there's an eggplant ad on the side. You say, hmm, that's funny. You laugh it off and move on. But the next day, you receive mails in the coupon for eggplants. Now that's interesting. But you don't have time, like many of us do, you throw them in the recycle bin and move on. And the next day, your favorite uh, video service provider recommends you movies for eggplants. Now that's weird, <laughs> right? Imagine this keeps happening. Yelp recommends you restaurants that serve only eggplants. Facebook is full of eggplant ads. I mean, it's an eggplant nightmare out there. <laughs> and seemingly out of nowhere, you get news from your insurance, premium, insurance provider that your insurance premium went down. And you have absolutely no idea what is going on. We all know that companies are collecting all kinds of data about us. What we search on the web, our Facebook posts, tweets, the restaurants that we go to, all of that. You name it, they are collecting it. You'll start thinking, what did I do to deserve the eggplant nightmare? <laughs> did I search for eggplants on Google? No. Did I send an email about eggplants? Why would I do that? So you go through your list, but just can't figure out what is going on. So you let it run its course. In due time, the eggplant nightmare disappears. Until one day, you wake up, check your email, and see that there's a beef ad there. You know how this story goes, right? But to make things worse, your insurance premium goes up. And you are back to the drawing board. What went wrong? Hint, artificial intelligence went wrong. And don't get me wrong, I am an artificial intelligence researcher. I love AI. AI has improved our lives a lot, and it has the potential to improve even further. For example, face detection on our camera so that the lens can focus on what is important. Face recognition in our digital photo album so that they can be automatically tagged by who is in the photo are all powered by AI. Intelligent personal assistants like Cortana, Siri, Google Now are all powered by AI. When you are in a foreign country and you don't know what the sign says, all you have to do now is point your camera and it can translate it right there and right then. It's amazing. And let's not forget self-driving cars. I can go on and on about what artificial intelligence can do for us in the future, but when the term artificial intelligence and future comes together, everybody says, what about the Terminator? And I say, what about it? No offense to my fellow researchers, but haven't you seen the video of a poor robot just trying to open the door? <laughs> well, the Terminator has seen it, and it is not happy. But I'm not here to solve our Terminator problem, at least not yet. I am here to solve your eggplant nightmare problem. Right. So what went wrong? Wouldn't it be nice to know that you have been to these five restaurants and computer was just trying to figure out what was common between them, and it had an aha moment. I found that they all serve eggplants, hence I declare that you love eggplants. And you go, what? <laughs> as weird as it might be, you at least know what is going on. But wouldn't it be even better to tell the computer, hey, silly, I went there for the fish and spaghetti, not for eggplants. And then it can correct itself that, yes, I declare that you love fish and spaghetti. And instead of an eggplant nightmare, now you would have the dream world of fish and spaghetti. And who knows what's going to happen to your insurance premium. I understand that eggplant nightmare can be a pretty big deal for you, I really do. But give me some credit when I say it's not a matter of life and death. Imagine the computer messing it up when it's making a diagnosis. I hereby declare that this patient is suffering from heart disease. And the doctor is confused. Checks the records. There is no way for this patient to suffer from heart disease. If the conversation ended there, it might end like this. The doctor says, this computer is stupid, useless. I'm not going to consult it ever again. But what if the conversation did not end there? What if the doctor could say, why? 
and the computer says, hey, this patient is 130 years old, what do you think? And the doctor checks the records, realizes it's a data entry error, corrects the mistake, and then the computer makes a new diagnosis that the, even the doctor could not think about. The computer turns out to be right, doctor is happy, and they together live happily ever after. I call this paradigm transparent and interactive AI, where the computer can explain itself and we can provide feedback to make them even better. For example, when they recommend us restaurants, we want to know why. Is it because of a certain menu item? Is it because of the location? Is it because of the price? When the computer makes a diagnosis, both the doctor and patient want to know why. When the computer says this tax claim is fraudulent, the expert wants to know why. When computers are making financial decisions, like this, determining our credit scores, scheduling flights, determining insurance premium, all kinds of insurance premium, we want to know why. And we don't want them to be just black boxes, we want them to be transparent and interactive. It all sounds great, right? But I have a bit of bad news and a bit of good news. And as usual, bad news first. There are several challenges that we AI researchers have to solve first. For example, imagine asking the computer the question, why? And all the answer you get is, because. <laughs> that wouldn't be very useful. But it would be equally useless if the computer gives you pages and pages of explanations that start with, once and upon a time, million years ago, the universe was blah, 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 blah. So how do you make sure computers generate relevant, but just the right amount of information so that it is helpful? And let's not forget the fact that we are all very busy and very lazy. We don't want to rate hundreds of movies on Netflix just to get a decent recommendation. We want the computers to be smart and fast learners so that they can learn with as little feedback as possible. So how do we make sure that happens? So that's the bad news. The good news is several researchers around the globe and me and my students at the machine learning lab are working around the clock on these challenges so that we can have transparent and interactive partnerships with computers of today and robots of tomorrow. Thank you.